Who is taller than who? <laughs> right. A fellow Kenyans, today we mark exactly one year since Kenya recorded its first case of COVID-19 on the 12th of March 2020. The new global threat that was sweeping across the world had arrived at our doorstep. In its wake, the coronavirus has left our national consciousness wounded as well as scarred and has impacted every aspect of our life and has tested us all to the limit. As part of our national response to contain the virus, we had to partially close down business activities that included people crowding. And in order to secure the future of our children, who are Kenya's most valuable treasure, we also had to close down our schools. To preserve the lives of our loved ones, especially our elderly, we had to isolate them as part of physical as well as social distancing. These measures heralded new normal. And the new normal did not expose weakness in our nation, but I'm proud to say that it revealed the amazing strength, civic responsibility, and resilience that is the heart of every Kenyan and is also at the heart of our nation. During this long year, our economy was in distress, but as much as it was in distress, it did not cave in. Our health system too was overstretched, but thanks to God was never overwhelmed, and as much as our nation was wounded, it remained unbowed. Fellow Kenyans, to date we have lost 1,879 compatriots to this pandemic. And these are not just mere numbers. Each represents a life, a lighting candle amidst us that has been dimmed. Each one is a dream cut short, a loved one, a parent, a sibling, a friend, a neighbor, a colleague, a fellow Kenyan, and a child of God. Similarly, the pandemic afflicted and wounded many businesses to the point of collapse. While some are in the mode of recovery, many also remained unbowed. Instead of giving in to the shock of lockdown and other COVID protocols, many businesses have decided to retool their business model and re-engineer their approach. Today, these enterprises, especially SMEs, have strung, uh, sprung back with incredible innovations capable of anticipating and responding to market shocks. The county governments, have also equally been affected. COVID has threatened to overstretch our county health infrastructure. However, and I want to thank these men and women behind me for the strength they have shown, they too have remained strong and unbowed. We have worked together with them and together with them we have expanded their health facilities 
to a level that is unprecedented since our independence. And now, once again working in concert with them, we are ready to roll out our universal health care coverage initiative. Fellow Kenyans, as I have said, we were wounded but unbowed in the last one year. And truth be told, we are yet to emerge from what I previously referred to as the fog of war. In addition, I called it a fog of war because the COVID enemy has remained unseen and its theaters of war are still unidentified and its rules of engagement are erratic, miscellaneous and unwritten. What is worse is that the enemy has also developed mutations. If we were dealing with one variant of the virus in the last one year, a new strain has also emerged, or new strains have also emerged in Britain, in Brazil, and in South Africa. We do not know to date how this will spread, nor do we know that the, ha the havoc that it can possibly rain on our population. In the face of this unparalleled enemy, therefore, the approach of both the national as well as county governments has been that of speedy action. And we have chosen this approach because an average plan executed with speed is superior to an excellent plan executed slowly. Because of our speedy approach, the multilateral agencies like the World Bank have credited our COVID containment success to swift policy action and bold program choices. However, our approach has also been a mixed bag of fortunes because on the one side we have paid the high cost of bold decisions and profited from the benefits of swift action. Take the first six months of the pandemic, for instance. We imposed curfews, declared cessation of movement from certain counties like Nairobi and Mombasa, and enforced specific lockdowns in areas like Isli here in Nairobi. The cost of this bold decision to our economy was hefty. Nevertheless, the profit of the swift policy action is immeasurable in terms of the human life saved. Fellow Kenyans, we tend to forget quickly. But let me remind you that experts had warned us that if we did not take bold actions, we would have approximately one million infections in Kenya today and 150,000 deaths. Other models had actually predicted even worse. In this regard, between protecting the economy and losing an average of 2,000 people daily as per those projections, we as a government chose life over economy. The logic here, and has been for the last one year, was that you can always revive an economy, but you cannot revive a lost life. If you take care of the people, they will take care eventually and revive our economy. Last year, fellow Kenyans, the Kenyan economy was projected to grow by 6.2%, but it only grew by 0.6% because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This, fellow Kenyans, translates to a loss of approximately 560 billion Kenya shillings of GDP arising from the resultant economic downturn. And this is the price we had to pay in 2020 for the bold decisions that we made to contain this economic freefall. 
the profit we made as a nation from this swift action was the prevention of an average of 2,000 deaths per day and 1 million infections by Christmas of 2020. The opportunity cost of saving these lives was therefore the foregoing of Kenya shillings 560 billion of GDP in order to preserve life. And I personally believe that it was worth every single cent. In fact, data the world over indicates that our 0.6% growth rate and loss in GDP was an acceptable economic reality under COVID. If our economy grew by plus 0.6%, the global economy declined to negative 3.5%. That of the euro area alone, which is our main trading partner, shrunk to negative 7.2%, and the United Kingdom shrunk by negative 10%. And most of sub-Saharan African economies also shrunk by 2.6%. This means that economies around the world shrunk, but Kenya did not, despite our major sacrifices. Fellow Kenyans, further projections indicate that in spite of the COVID plunge, our economy is likely to bounce back and grow by approximately 7% in the year 2021. If we had not made the bold decisions of 2020, as is projected, our economy would in 2021 have contracted by 15%. Fellow Kenyans, the issue before us this Friday, the 12th of March, 2021, is that of degrees of de-escalation. How much of the country should we open up and how much should we keep shut? More so given that the new COVID strain from Britain, Brazil and South Africa and also because of what is happening in our neighborhood. And because in the past our policy decisions have been guided by science, data and evidence we will continue to be guided by the scientific evidence. Empirical evidence over the last one year shows us that when we escalate measures, levels of community infections and positivity rates go down. When we escalated measures in July of 2020, the positivity rate fell from 13% in June to 4% in September. And when we relaxed the measures in September of 2020, the positivity rate rose to its highest in November 2020 to a level of 19%. If decision-making follows data and sound policy actions speak to science, what does this pattern tell us? In January of this year, the positivity rate was at 2% partly because of civic duty and responsibility of citizens. But by March of this year, our current month, it has climbed once again back up to 13%, and unfortunately, it is still rising. What does this trend invite from a government that embraces science and evidence? Fellow Kenyans, to secure the gains we are making in the war against the virus, and while also addressing the current evolution of the disease, and particularly to address measures in regard to the third wave of the pandemic, and also on the advice of the National Security Council, the Council of Governors, we today in keeping with the recommendations of the National Emergency Response Committee on Coronavirus, issue the first coronavirus public order of 2021 as follows. Number one,
cognizant that the propagation of the coronavirus within our borders has been fueled by political gatherings and large social gatherings, today I direct that all forms of political gathering be and are hereby prohibited for a period of 30 days effective midnight on this 12th of March, 2021. That the escalation or de-escalation of the containment measures in regard to the prohibition of political gatherings and social gatherings dependent on whether the national endeavor to break the chain of transmission will have been achieved. So if we do not achieve it, we shall extend it. Number three, to secure the implementation of the order on public gatherings and public ceremonies, I hereby further direct the national government administration officers, jointly with the national police service and county government enforcement officers, to strictly enforce this public order, regardless of the social status, political status, of conveners of such political gatherings or social gatherings. Four, in regard to funerals, cremations, and other interment ceremonies, it is directed that these ceremonies shall be conducted strictly within 72 hours of confirmation of death. Four, it has further been ordered that attendees for funerals and graveside crematoria ceremonies or crematoria ceremonies shall be limited to the immediate family of the deceased with a number capped at no more than 100 persons. That at attendees of celebrations of weddings and other traditional unions and rites is hereby capped at 100 persons. Seven, there shall continue to be strict maintenance and enforcement of public social health measures, including regular washing of hands with soap and water, or use of sanitizers, physical and social distancing in all public areas. And eight, that in line with the guidelines issued by the Interfaith Council, only a maximum of one third of the capacity of places of worship will be allowed at each worship ceremony. The Ministry of Health, working closely with the National Government Administration officers, are also directed to enhance and strictly enforce border health security with a greater emphasis on informal entry points as the country remains at risk of the importation of new variants of the COVID-19. The Ministry of Health shall strengthen the existing COVID-19 genomic surveillance so as to monitor the circulating strains in the country for the purpose of informing policy decisions, as well as public health interventions. Eleven, that all isolation facilities in the country must be maintained at a high state of preparedness through continuous capacity building and provisions of adequate PPEs for healthcare workers supported by the continuous implementation of infection prevention and control measures. And 12, the county governments shall also enhance investment in piped and portable oxygen to isolation and critical care treatment facilities for the management of severe cases. And 13, the nationwide curfew is hereby extended for a further containment of 60 days. And in that regard, all bars and restaurants and other establishments open to the public must, as is current, close by 9 p.m. 
14. To provide business continuity during the containment period, exemption on the application of curfew is hereby granted to essential service providers, factories working on two shifts, construction sites, all these are allowed to operate their night shifts. 15. To secure the implementation of the revised containment measures and to ensure effective enforcement of the same, today, in conjunction with my colleagues from the county governments, we have established an intergovernmental coordination framework in each of the nation's 47 counties. The county's intergovernmental committee will be co-chaired by the respective county governors and county commissioners and feature representatives of the county security teams, the county health chiefs, and the county government enforcement units. The county's intergovernmental committee shall be convened at least once every week to assess the county-specific compliance levels. 18. The Cabinet Secretary for Transport, jointly with the Cabinet Secretary for Health, are directed to develop revised protocols for public transport in consultation with all stakeholders in the transport sector. Fellow Kenyans, as I conclude, let me leave you with two thoughts. One, Kenya is entering a critical phase in the management and control of the pandemic. With the arrival currently of World Health Organization pre-qualified COVID-19 vaccines, this vaccine has been tested and our own medical experts are persuaded that it is safely that, that its safety profile is bankable. The vaccine rollout, as I said a few days ago, will be done in phases and guided by the National Deployment Vaccination Plan. With the first phase, which is currently ongoing, targeting frontline health workers, uniformed personnel, teachers, as well as those engaged in emergency services such as the fire brigade, fire fighters, and so on and so forth. The second phase, which will also start immediately, we receive our second uh, consignment, will target the elderly people and those with pre-existing conditions. But I must also make it clear that as much as we recommend the vaccine be, ta be taken, vaccination shall be voluntary. The second thought I wish to leave you with has to do with what explains our success against this invisible enemy in the last one year. Fellow Kenyans, subconsciously, we have developed a culture of civic duty and responsibility. The culture of minding yourself and becoming your brother's keeper is getting entrenched as a norm and practice under COVID conditions. And this culture of civic responsibility may explain in part the drop of COVID positivity rate from 19% in November 2020 to 2% in January of this year. I must remind you that government will do its part to protect Kenyans, but the first line of defense against this invisible enemy is the people. If we exercise civic responsibility and act as our brother's keepers, we will have won half the battle against this pandemic. Finally, I know our students who will be sitting for their national examinations in the coming week are busy preparing. Let me say both as a father and, your pre and as your president, I know you have arrived at the examination desk 
following a road marred by many challenges that have not been faced by others before you. Sitting for your examinations after having been out of class for almost a year, I want you to know that the entire country and I are rooting for you. To our grade four, to our class eight, to our form four candidates, I convey my best wishes to you all, and I pray that your efforts will indeed bear bountiful harvest. May God bless you, and may God bless Kenya. Sina mengi na sitaki kusema mengi, nafikiri yale tumesema ya tosha. Yangu tu ni kuambia wa Kenya, ya kwanza ni shukran. Shukran kwa yale yote ambaye tumevumilia mwaka huu ambao umekuwa mgumu tukipambana na jangwa hili la COVID-19. Ya pili, kusema tumeanza kuona dalili ya kwamba uchumi wetu waweza kufufuka. Lakini, tukiwa hapo, lazima tuendelee kuwa macho. Tusifikirie ya kwamba huu ugonjwa umetuondokea. Na ndipo tuwasema ya kwamba, Hata wakati tunaendelea kushughulikia uchumi wetu cha muhimu zaidi ni maisha ya kila mwananchi na lazima tuendelee kujitahadhari na ndipo tuwasema ya kwamba tunataka kuendelea kuona uchumi wetu na wananchi wetu wakienda kazi na ndipo leo hatujafunga hatujafunga mambo ya wananchi kuweza kwenda shughuli zao mbali mbali tunasema tu wakati mnaendelea na shughuli zenu muwe mnaendelea kuhimiza mambo ya kuvaa barakoa tuendelee kuhimiza mambo ya wananchi kuosha mikono na kutumia sanitizer tuendelee kuhimiza mambo ya social distancing kwa sababu kwa muda sasa wa wiki chache tumeanza kuona ugonjwa huu ukipanda tena na ndipo tunasema na tumekubaliana na wenzangu ya kwamba yale mambo ambayo sio lazima na ambaye haihusu shughuli za mwananchi za kikawaida tumesema tumeyafunga kama ni mazishi tumesema ya kwamba 72 hours tuwe tumemalizana na mambo ya mazishi na hivyo tuwasema sio kwa sababu ya kuzuia wenzetu kumon wale ambao wamepoteza lakini ni kuzuia wengine wasiende matanga wajipate kwa shida na hao pia tuwapoteze juu ya wale ambao walienda kuzika na ndipo tuwasema mazishi itakuwa ya kifamilia na ndipo tuwasema hata kama ni harusi hatuzui watu kuendelea na shughuli zao za harusi na mambo mengine lakini pia tusiende kwa maharusi alafu kutoka harusi tuwaenda matanga harusi itakuwa ya familia na hakuna ambaye itazidi kama mazishi zaidi ya watu mia moja. na hata sisi kama wanasiasa tukiwa kweli tunapenda wenzetu wa Kenya wenzetu tuwache na tuwaruhusu waendelee na shughuli zao za kikawaida na hii mambo ya mikutano kutoka leo tumesema yamezimwa kwa muda wa siku 30 30 days tumefunga na hiyo ina apply kutoka kwangu kama rais mpaka kwa MCA kule chini na yeyote na tumetoa hiyo kama amri na tumekubaliana na wenzangu hapa 
ya kwamba yule ambaye atadhubutu kuvunja hiyo sheria awe ni nani ama ni nani ndio nasema mpaka mimi mwenyewe awe ni nani ama ni nani atashughulikiwa kulingana na sheria za taifa letu la Kenya wenzetu lazima tujue ya kwamba maisha na nchi yetu ni muhimu zaidi kuliko mtu yeyote binafsi na lazima tuyazingatie na nawaomba kwa heshima kubwa sana tuataka kufufua uchumi wetu na ndio tuwasema hatutaki kuguza sana sana mambo ambayo itahusu uchumi na maisha ya watu lakini tunataka wenzetu tuwe tuko macho ugonjwa ni wa ukweli ni mengi ambaye inatendeka dunia mzima ambaye itatuchangaisha sisi wote ni wengi hata nchi yetu ambao wamekumbwa na huu ugonjwa wengi hata hawasemi lakini yangu ni kuwauliza na nawauliza kwa heshima kubwa sana wenzangu tufikirie maisha ya wenzetu ambao tunashughulikiana na hawa na najua tukifanya hivyo Mwenyezi Mungu atatujalia na hii jangwa tutaipita na tutaokoa maisha ya wenzetu kwa sababu ya ile tabia ambayo sisi tutashikilia kwa hivyo yangu ni hayo ni machache nataka kushukuru wenzetu viongozi wa serikali zetu za ungatuzi kwa vile tumeshirikiana pamoja na tutaendelea kushirikiana pamoja nataka kuwarudishia asante nataka kupongeza na niseme ilikuwa furaha yangu kufanya kazi pamoja na team ambayo ilikuweko hapo awali ikiongozwa na gavana wa Kakamega gavana wa Paranya na najua pia hata nyinyi ambao mmechukua usukani sasa tutaendelea kufanya kazi hivyo hivyo kwa niaba ya wananchi wetu kwa hayo machache na mengi ningependa tu nimpatie nafasi gavana wa embu ambaye sasa ndiyo mwenyekiti wa council of governors aweze pia kutoa hutuba yake fupi na ndiyo tumalizie hapo asanteni sana gavana endelea asante sana mkuu rais kwa kunipatia na hii fasi ya kuunga mkono kwa yale umesema tumeongea hapo ndani na tukakubaliana ile mambo yote umesema na hii timu yangu hii ya, ya county government tukiwa pamoja na the chairman ambaye wako hapa of various committees pamoja na wenzangu ambaye hawako hapa tutaendelea kusaidiana na national government vile wenzetu ambaye wame wametuachia mandaraka vile mmekuwa mkifanya pamoja saidi tukianza na hii mambo ya corona kwa sababu inaangamiza watu wetu saidi tusirikiana pamoja ni watu wetu wapone wa, wa, wa na wa escape hii mambo ya covid tuende safari moja pamoja asante sana rais mtukufu uko na swali ama mmetosheka mmetosheka mungu awabariki na walinde <laughs>